100 Years of Sparks, one of the most explosive documentaries you will ever watch. It is a story about American fireworks company that has been owned by the Sorgai family for over 100 years. For over a century now, the Sorgai family and their crew members have been putting their lives on the line for your entertainment, never knowing when a shell will misfire or even blow up right next to them. Do not attempt anything you see. Sit back, relax, and keep your eyes to the skies. Welcome to American Fireworks. The Sorgai's journey began when about seven Italian pyro families came over to America in the early 1900s and ended up in what is now known as the Fireworks Beltway that included New York, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. You could trace Vincenzo's roots back to a small town outside of Naples, Italy, where as a young boy he started learning the pyrotechnic trade from his father and grandfather. Being a third generation pyrotechnician, Vincenzo was determined to fulfill his dream of fame and fortune in America. Vincenzo Sorgai established American Fireworks in Hudson, Ohio in 1902. If Vincenzo were alive today, he would be amazed at how far his company has grown since the early 1900s. Today, great-grandsons John David and Roberto Sorgai are at the helm of this multi-generational company. My great-grandfather Vincenzo actually found his way here to Hudson working the Pennsylvania Railroad. He was an actual water boy from Ellis Island. He basically followed the tracks all the way here to Hudson. Once in Hudson, in an old abandoned shack is where he started mastering his craft of fireworks. At the same time, my great-grandmother Lucy was working in a boarding house where he was staying. And that's where their love blossomed and the two of them came together and started the roots of our company here in Hudson. Lucy and Vincenzo purchased an old potato farm in Hudson, and from a suggestion of a friend, they named their new business American Fireworks. 100 years later, the business is still family-owned, operated, and located on that same property. My great-grandmother, Lucy Sorgai, was sort of a pioneer in her own way that she was in a fireworks business, a, a dirty business, and she was the driving force of actually going out on the road and selling uh, materials and shows and products. When the firework company was in its infancy, Lucy and Jim had to work very hard to make a living. With more than 40 employees working for them in the early 1920s, Lucy would borrow money each year to pay the employees. Lucy would do odd jobs to help pay the bills and put food on the table. Once fireworks season was over, she would march to the bank, pay off the loan, buy more supplies, and start the process again. Slowly, they were making headway, but it was tough. Well, they didn't have it easy. I mean, back when they were doing business, there were shows like $200, $300, but that's progress, I guess. So in the 20s is when we sort of really got our feet off the ground. The recipes became more dominant. The manufacturing here in Hudson, Ohio became very dominant, and he began selling nationwide at that point. We manufactured heavily through the 80s, even into the early 90s. Different shells, different sizes, three brake, four brake, five brake shells. This is actually a parachute shell that we shot on the Nixon Lodge campaign. We would manufacture every piece of the product. So you'd have your fuse that would light and then go down to your lift charge, which is at the bottom of the shell. Um, a lift charge, which is like two or four F powder, which would then kick the shell into the air. Um, and light what's inside of here is what's called a time fuse. Then would burn inside of the shell, the heart of the shell. And once it got to the middle or the shell got to its apex, it would then burst what's in the middle of the shell, which is called a burst charge. A burst charge at that point would then kick the shell open like a cantaloupe and uh, would propel what are called stars. If they look like little black BBs or marbles, um, which are the dehydrated chemicals that then make up the effect that you'll see, whether it's a crackle or a red to blue to purple or a whistle component. So once the shell is then kicked open, it'll then light these little BBs and stars, which then will give you your display. Vincenzo, or Jimmy the Bomb as his friends knew him, was ahead of his time. He was not only a dreamer, he was an innovator. As their business started to pick up speed, Vincenzo was in the shed designing a rocket to go to the moon. His first two attempts were met with some success as he started to garner some worldwide attention. He received letters from around the world, including those who wanted to be on the first manned ship to the moon. He never got his third rocket off, because the townspeople thought it was inhumane to send a dog up. Vincenzo and Lucy actually had two sons. Johnny was their firstborn, and their secondborn, my grandfather Jimmy. As they grew older, it was definitely Johnny who had more of a role in the business. He was sort of looked at as the predecessor to my great-grandfather Vincenzo and was the one more to the hands-on. When he was 16, one of the hardest things for our family and to my 
great-grandmother Lucy's deathbed, Johnny actually drowned at a local pool here outside of Hudson. At this time, Jimmy was only 10. The town was very small, so everybody knew Johnny. He was a very important part of the community. And this is what sort of catapulted Jimmy into the leadership role. Even at that age, he was up here working, and as Vincenzo got older, this is what sort of gave Jimmy the leadership position and how he ended up taking over the company. American Fireworks Company started off as a catalog company. They would make the shells, design a show, and then sell them to fire departments and deliver them to the fire stations to shoot off, selling a couple dozen shows a year. Today, American Fireworks is known as a concept to clean up fireworks company, designing, delivering, and producing over 800 shows a year. In the first year we put a catalog out, we um, had like just a folder, and then we had papers, we like eight pages, we assembled and put in this folder. And I did those over in the apartment when I lived over there. I think I did the first year like 20,000 of them. The industry has definitely evolved from a catalog fire department shooting and uh, into the 80s and 90s it's more so that the company will actually then produce the displays for the communities. The display end of the company really started taking off when my grandfather Jimmy started taking more of a, a leadership role. He met my grandmother Nancy and it was just a classic love story, blind date. One of his buddies told him that there's this cute girl that family has a funeral home business over in Akron, we think you should you know, go on a date with her. Never went on another date with anyone else again. They you know, fell in love, they were married soon thereafter. That's when they had my father. My father you know, was their only child. Then the display company really started taking off. My grandfather really got out on the road as my grandmother stayed home and took care of my father and raised him. It went from a manufacturing company to some local displays to shooting the Detroit Freedom Festival. We were shooting fireworks on the White House lawn going all the way down to Florida, traveling to Haiti, and it was really his dedication on the road. Because back then, there wasn't Google Earth, long distance phone calls, and the internet. It was you were knocking on doors. And his reputation started to gain across the Midwest and all across the country, to be honest. And that's when it really took off. When Lucy was only three, she and her sister Julie were sent to a convent to live because their mother could not care for them. The one thing that kept Lucy going was seeing the statue of the Good Shepherd. Years later, her grandson John found that broken statue in the woods by the convent. He took it home, had it repaired, and gave it to Lucy as a present. Johnny claims that when he originally found it, the statue was deep in the woods. He came back the next day and a path was cleared all the way to the statue. When he went to thank the students at the seminary, they said they didn't do it. To this day, no one knows who made the path. My father went down to University of Miami in Florida and there he was studying education because he was going to do the fireworks in the summer and sort of teach in the off season. There is where he met my mom, Mercedes. She was actually a, a daughter of Cuban immigrants from about 15 years prior and uh, they fell in love down there. He said he wasn't leaving until he found himself a good girl. He found her down there and within, you know, within a year they were engaged and you know, back here. Started putting his stamp on the company into the 80s. Uh, into the 80s, myself and my two brothers were born, and that's when he started up the retail end of the business. American Fireworks Company retail store started out in a small 300 square foot building in the 1980s with just a few hundred customers. Today, their retail space is over 4,000 square feet. The store now has over 8,000 customers going through the doors during the month of July alone and has expanded to several other locations nationwide. I had actually gone down to school at the University of Miami just like my father, my mother had, and I was finishing up my degree down there. Roberto was finishing up high school here in Hudson. In 2005, it really hit. My grandfather actually had been fighting a heart condition for over 10 years. In the mid-90s, they had given him six months to live, and he fought through it, fought through it, and fought through it. But then finally, on July 1st of that year, he did pass. He was still a very big part of the leadership part of the display side. Uh, at around the same time, my father, Johnny, who was running the whole entire retail side, was diagnosed with late stage cancer. And then that's when my father started getting progressively sick. So it went into 2006, and then he had passed away then. So at that point, we sat down, we had meetings with our employees, we had meetings with our uh, mother and grandmother, and sort of decide what's the next step. And uh, my grandmother always said it was my grandfather's vision to give us an opportunity to come up here and work. So she wanted to give us that opportunity if we wanted to take on the task. At that time, it was really, really difficult because, you know, we're kids. I mean, at that point, an 18-year-old and a 23-year-old, 
jumping into a business that is strived on relationships. We were expected to sort of go into these meetings, especially Roberto with the display end. He had to meet with these same customers that had dealt with my grandfather for 20, 30, 40 years. So we jumped right in. It was very difficult at first. We got thrown right into the fire. We were up here, you know, building the shows, selling the shows, running the retail store, everything. It was a thousand different directions, but it is what it is. You can't fight it away. We weren't just going to throw away a hundred years of business uh, just because it was going to be tough initially. And today we're a lot more battle tested because of it. A lot of people ask us what, what we feel is the next step in our company's history or where is it going to be now 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now or the next 100 years. John David and I's goal and dream is always to be able to have the opportunity to give what our ancestors, our parents, our grandparents, our great grandparents have given us and to move this company forward to the next generation. We're not looking to be here for another one year, two years, three years. Hudson's been our home and it's always been our home and we want to continue to make it our home. So we'd love to see this company stay here in Hudson, Ohio and uh, to grow and to spread, get it to our next generation to see what innovations will come at that point.